5.1 and 5.2 sine and cosine functions. We're going to do these two sections together because they are two parts of the same thing. And that is, as we go around a circle, we have a y value of our coordinate. That would be sine. We have an x value of our coordinate. That would be cos. Let's try that moving this red terminal arm around this unit circle, 15 degrees at a time. We're just going to estimate these coordinates. Um, this is positive 1 here, and this is positive 1 here. For 0 degrees, we don't have to estimate at all, though. Our coordinate here is 1, 0. Now, the x values are cos, so that will be 1. And our y values are sine, so that will be 0. Now we move our terminal arm to 15 degrees, and we estimate this point here. Now, we're never going to get the exact value because this is a radical, and we're just trying to estimate it on this graph. It looks like our x-coordinate is about 0 0.97. It looks like our y value is over 2.5, so we'll say 0 0.26. That would mean that our x value 0.97 and our sine or y value is 0.26. 30 degrees, we're estimating that point right there, probably 0.87. And the y value is easy, it's just one half. So that means our sine is one half and our cos is 0.87. Now 45 degrees. Looks like we're just barely over 0.7, and the same for x and y. So 0 0.71, 0 0.71. Now 60 degrees. 60 degrees is where things start to repeat. We see that we're now at 0 0.5 for cos, and about 0 0.87 for sine. And that's what we had for 30. So if we keep going, we're going to have these two, but switched right here. And then these points just keep repeating, um, although some of them get negative depending on the quadrant. So that's enough estimating there. Now we want to put this on our graph. We'll graph sine first. So sine is 0, 0. The x-axis is our angle. Next we've got 15, 0 0.26. And we've got 30 degrees and 0 0.5. Next, we've got 45 degrees and 0 0.71. 60 degrees and 0 0.87. After that, it will go to 0 0.97. And then to 1. Now, I've plotted sine theta in blue, and I've plotted cos theta in red. And there's two really important things to note. Cos theta starts, I put that in quotation mark because it doesn't really start, it, it keeps going, but its y-intercept is a maximum, naturally, until we start doing transformations on it. And sine theta naturally starts at its midline, the middle of the graph um, before we start doing transformations on it as well. There are a lot of words we need to know when dealing with these sinusoidal functions. First one is this horizontal line that runs through the middle of the function. It's called a midline. It's called the vertical translation or vertical displacement because we're going to start moving it up and down when we do transformations on this. It's called the mean or the average because if you take the max and the minimum and find the average, it will be this midline, or it's called the principal axis. The amplitude is the distance from the midline to the maximum, or the midline to the minimum, and it's always a positive measurement. The period is the length of the interval on the domain for the function to complete one cycle. Could be from maximum to maximum, could be from minimum to minimum, or it could be the midline, where it hits the midline going up, to where it hits the midline going up. Now also notice that it takes just as long for it to go up and back down to the midline as it takes to go down below the midline and back up. That means that 
from here to here is half a period. And that may come in handy during some problems. Same with this, just to go up from the midline would be a quarter of the period. The horizontal translation is also called the phase shift, and it's just translating it right or left. From the graph, we want to identify the period, the amplitude, the midline, and the phase shift of these sine functions. So first, let's find the period. How long does it take before it repeats? Now, going from this maximum to maximum would be the period, but it's not on any line, so we'd be guessing that point. Let's go from here, because we know that's at x equals 0, and here x equals pi. See, this is hitting y equals 1 going down, and we follow it around, and it hits y equals 1 going down here, so that's one complete uh, cycle. So this would be pi units. Let's do the midline next. That would be the middle of the graph horizontally anyway, so 4 and negative 2. So it looks like the midline is actually at y equals 1. So y equals 1. Next, it's a line, so I wrote an equation for it. Next, the amplitude is from the midline to the maximum, which is 3, or from the midline to the minimum, which is also 3. And last, the phase shift. How much did this shift? Now remember when we first graphed this, on the first slide, sine usually starts off at its midline going up. So this could have been a starting point. Not this, because this is starting at the midline but going down. So this one. That means that it shifted right pi over 2 units. Right. But you might say, yeah, but there's a lot of those. What about this one here? Well, that could have been a starting as well. So maybe it shifted left pi over two units. So we don't know. There's obviously more than one answer for the phase shift. Let's look at the next one. Where's the period here? So if we try to look for maximum to maximum, we can't see that. Here we go. We can go from minimum to minimum, and that would be 4 pi. Let's do the midline next. That would be the middle of this horizontally, and that would be right along here at y equals negative 10. And write it like uh, an equation. Next, we've got the amplitude. Distance from the midline to the maximum is 5. And last, the phase shift. So given that this is a sine function, it should have started at the midline going up. So that was either here or could have been here. There's infinite answers. So we could just say uh, write 3 pi units or left uh, pi units. When we look at the equation, of sine and cos, they'll both have the same format, and a, b, c, and d will all have the same effect. So I'm only going to do this for sine. I want to match up the transformation or characteristic with each of these terms in the equation. So first, a, we know from transformations that a could be the vertical stretch, or it could be the vertical reflection. Now also, now, with sine functions, we know that this could be the amplitude. B is going to be the horizontal stretch, could be the horizontal reflection, and in this one, it's going to not be the period, but it will affect the period. Next for C, this will be, from transformations, our horizontal shift. And now we might call it that, or we might call it the phase shift. And last, D will be our vertical translation, and it's also our midline.
Amplitude is easy to remember because it's a in our function. Shown on the graph is y equals sine x, and we want to draw y equals 2.5 sine x. That means that every point is going to be vertically stretched around the x-axis by a factor of 2.5. So this point that's y equals 1 will now be 2.5, so it'll be up there. This point here that's negative 1 will be at negative 2.5 here. Now I've drawn traced over this graph already and I'm just going to pull it up here and stretch it only vertically not horizontally. So that's how our graph would look. Same period, same midline, it just got stretched vertically. Is there a formula to find the amplitude? Sure. If you look at the graph, you notice the amplitude is just half the distance from uh, max to the minimum. So all we have to do is say, we'll take the max, we'll subtract the minimum, that will give us the distance in between here and here, and then divide it by 2. So if we have that information, we can use the formula. Our midline is conveniently d in our equation, midline. Shown on the graph is y equals sine x. We want to draw y equals sine x minus 1. So our midline used to be at y equals 0, and now it will be at y equals negative 1. So we'll just take this graph. I've already traced over it. We're going to shift it down. It's just a vertical translation. Down one unit. Is there a formula to find the midline? Yes, there is. Remember, it is the average. So we could just take the max plus the min, because that's how we find average, divided by how many there are. There's just two. The horizontal translation, or phase shift, is C in our equation. Shown on the graph is y equals sine x. We want to draw y equals sine x plus pi. This would be a shift left of pi units. So I've traced over the graph already. We just need to shift this pi units. So that point in the middle will end up pi units to the left. Last is our b value, the horizontal stretch. We have here on the graph y equals sine x. See that our b value would be 1. So what's the period of this graph? It would be 2 pi. Let's look at another one. y equals sine 2x, so our b value is 2. What's the period of this? This would be pi. So can I just emphasize that b is not the period? But how is it related to the period? Now, 2 pi was our original period, and we're going to stretch it by 1 over b. And that will give us our new period. Or if we're trying to find b, because we have the period, 2 pi divided by period. Now, if we're working in degrees, then we could say the period is equal to 360 degrees divided by b. Shown below is y equals sine x. We want to draw y equals sine 0.5x. So this is a horizontal stretch about the y-axis by a factor of 2. So about the y-axis means that this point at the origin, in this case, is not going to move, and we're stretching it away from the y-axis. That means that this point here, for example, needs to be multiplied by 2, so it will then be here. This point here, pi, will be multiplied and become 2 pi. So let's try to stretch this that I've copied here. Now first, I'm going to just move it over to the 3 pi here, and I'm going to stretch it. It's not going to stretch about the y-axis. It's actually going to stretch from here. So first, I'll just stretch it to make it twice as wide without making it any taller. So there, now it's twice as wide. And it's as if we stretched it here from the origin. So it hits this point that we wanted and it hit that point that we wanted. So it's twice as wide from the y-axis.
Reflections. If a is less than 0, there's a reflection in the x-axis. And if b is less than 0, there's a reflection in the y-axis. So below, we have y equals sine x again. And we want to draw y equals negative sine x. So that means that we want to reflect it in the x-axis. So this point that was right here will become negative. And this point that was negative, we want to become positive. These points that are on the x-axis are invariant. They're not going anywhere. Now let's just see. I've traced this again, and I think I can just flip it over. Yoink. There we go. Below is shown y equals sine x, and this time we want to reflect it in the y-axis. So we want this point here to become that point, and we want this point here to become that point. So I've traced this graph again. Let's see if we can flip it right to left this time. And there we go. Now you might say, hey, those are the same, and you'd be right. And this brings us to our next example. We want three equations for each of these graphs. First, we need to pick the important information from the graph, like amplitude will give us our A. In this case, it's 1. Our midline gives us our D value. In this case, it's 0. And our B is 2 pi divided by the period. And in this case, the period is 2 pi, so our b value is just 1. And our c is going to depend on how we write the equation. The first way we could write this, an equation for this graph, is y equals sine x. It starts at its midline, it goes up, and it's got a period of 2 pi and an amplitude of 1. That's y equals sine x. We could also reflect it in the x and y axes and get the same thing. We could also make a cos graph. Now, cos normally starts at its maximum, and so in this case, it could be cos but shifted right pi over 2 units. So x minus pi over 2. Now, there would be infinitely many equations that we could create to represent this graph, but notice that the amplitude is always 1, not the a value necessarily, but the amplitude is always 1, the midline is always 0, and the period is always 2 pi for all of these. For the next one, our amplitude is 2, so our a value is 2. Our midline is y equals 1, so our d value is 1. To find b, it's 2 pi over the period. And for this one, looks like our period is 8 pi. So 2 pi over 8 pi gives us a b value of 1 quarter. And then our c value will depend on the equation that we make. The first obvious one is, this starts at its midline going up. So this is just a sine function. So we could say y equals 2 sine 1 quarter x plus 1. So the amplitude, the b value, and the d are all there. Let's try another sine function. What happens if we reflect it? And it doesn't matter which reflection because they both have the same result. So let's reflect here. That means that our function looks like this now, and we want this point over to here, so we can just shift it over 4 pi units. So. And last, let's make a sine function, get it involved, 2 cos 1 quarter and then plus 1. And what do we have to do to make this uh, look like this? Well, cos will start at its maximum, so it would have started here, and that maximum point is here, so we need to move that maximum that cos gives us 
write two pi units. This one we also want to make three equations that represent this graph. So we need to find our a, a for amplitude, looks like it's one for this one. Our midline is y equals negative two. So our d value is negative two. Our b value is two pi divided by the period. And the period in this case is Looks like 4 pi. So you can go from minimum to minimum or maximum to maximum. Looks like it's 4 pi here, which would give our b value to be 1 over 2. And our c value is going to depend on the equation that we're making, what shift we need to make it work. The first obvious one would be y equals negative cos, because cos usually starts at its maximum. And if we do a vertical reflection, we can make it start at the minimum. So just negative cos and then put in our b one half x and our d values negative two. Another cos one could be without a reflection and instead we'll do a shift. So again, cos starts at its maximum. If we just shift that two pi units right, then it will be there. We could have also shifted it two pi units left. So this gives us another two options. I'll just write a shift of two pi units to the right. Let's use sine just to get it involved. Y equals sine one half. Now sine starts at its midline going up. So that could have been a sine starting point. We just need to move it pi units to the right to make it uh, right there. Now some students have trouble figuring out the horizontal shift from the graph. So let's do that algebraically using the last example here. We've got y equals sine one half uh, x minus c. So we'll pretend we couldn't find that from the graph this time, uh, minus two. Now we need a point on the graph. Let's just use this one. That would be pi and negative two. So negative two for y and pi for x. And now we just need to solve for c. So plus two on both sides. 0 equals sine of all of this. Take the inverse sine of both sides. This side it cancels with the sine. And the inverse sine of 0 is could be just 0. And there's more than one answer to that, and there's more than one answer for the c value, but we'll just take the, the easiest one here. Multiply both sides by 2. Get rid of that. 0 equals pi minus c. Add c onto the other side, and we get c equals pi. Example 5. We want to work from the equation now. Find the amplitude. So our amplitude is our a value, 16. Find the period. The period is 2 pi, because we're working in radians, divided by the b value, pi over 8. And the period turns out to be 16 as well. The phase shift. And that would be this value here, 2 units to the right. And last, our vertical displacement, or midline. And that would be our d value, which would be 100 units up. And there are no reflections in this equation here. So we're ready to sketch the function. We'll just draw some axes here with a break in it, because 100 is too far up. So there's my break. Okay, so the midline is at 100, so I'm going to mark that on here. And our amplitude is 16, which means my maximum is 116. It's the midline plus the amplitude. That would be the maximum. The minimum, 100 minus 16, so 84. And just to help me draw this, just extend these lines all out here like that. Okay, now this is the sine function, so it's going to start at its um, midline going up. 
Now there is a phase shift here. I'll take care of that in a second. So going up, coming back down, going up, coming back down, going up. Good enough. One period is 16. So this point right here would be 16. And another period here would be 32. And last thing we need to do is the phase shift. So I'm going to move this graph over two units. One, two. Does that look like two? Sure. We'll just make it two. We'll say that this is now at 18 and this is now at 34. There's my nice sketch. The next one, we've got our amplitude is our A value. And that would be one, not negative one, that's a reflection. Amplitude is one. Our period is two pi divided by our B value, which is eight. So in this case, our period is pi over four. Next, our phase shift. And that would be pi units. And since there's a plus here, left. Next, our vertical displacement. That would be two units down. And the reflection, there is a reflection this time. It's a reflection over the x-axis or a vertical reflection about the x-axis. Reflection. We can follow a similar procedure as we did in this example. I've already graphed it though. Can I still use mapping notation? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Yes, you can. We have x, any point x, y on this graph. We'll start with y equals sine x and we'll transform it to this. x is horizontally stretched by a factor of two and shifted left pi units. Looks like y has a vertical reflection and shifted down one unit. So that would be our mapping, our general mapping notation there. And let's actually try it on some points like 0, 0. What happens to that point? Plug in 0, 0 here and here, and we get negative pi, negative 1. That would be here. Let's try another one, pi over 2 and 1 this point here. We plug that into here and we get 0, negative 2. So that would be down here. Another point, how about pi and 0? And we plug that in here, we get pi and negative 1. Let's put that on the graph. Yeah. And one more, 3 pi. 3 pi over 2, negative 1. And that becomes 2 pi and 0. 2 pi and 0. So now we see this is our transformed function here. Goes down here, goes up here, and that's our maximum, and off we go. Prince Rupert has the deepest natural harbor in North America. The depth of the water in meters is modeled by this equation where T is the time in hours after high tide. What is the period for the tide? So the period is two pi divided by B. And that's two pi divided by pi over six in this case, and that would be 12. And we're in hours, so 12 hours. Every 12 hours, the tide goes in and out. So twice a day. What is the minimum water depth? Well, the minimum water depth would be find the midline and subtract the amplitude, and we'd get four. And we're working in meters, four meters. The maximum would be 12 plus eight, which would be 20 meters. So you can see that's an enormous difference. An ocean liner needs at least 13 meters of water to dock safely. How many hours per tide is it possible to dock? Let's sketch this problem so we can have visually understand what's going on. 
let's see, this will be our time after high tide in hours. This will be our depth in meters. We'll say it's uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. 20 is the highest. And 4 would be our lowest. So I'll just mark those on there so it's easier for me to draw. We've got a cos function, and it starts at its maximum. So at time 0, here we're at our maximum. And we come down, we have our minimum, and then we go back up. And this takes 12 hours, so I'll put 12 here. Now we need 13 meters of water, so that's uh, about 11, 12, 13, say it's about there. So we need this much water at least. That means anything in here will be safe. And we'll just cut it off here. Anything in here will also be safe. So we need to know how much time do we've got? What time is this right here? Now you can use algebra or you can use a graphing calculator. I just used a graphing calculator and found this intersection point here. It was 2.76. I also found this one because some students might not notice the symmetry. This one is 9.239. So we need to know this time here and this time here. And I guess my drawing's not that accurate because those don't look the same, but they actually are. So we could find the second interval here, 12 minus 9.239. That would be 276. And the first interval is easy. That's 0 to 2.76. And so really we have just two times 2.76. Since they're the same, we could have just found 1 and multiplied it by 2, or we could, like this, find this one, realize it's the same. Now we've got them both. Anyways, this is 5.52 hours. So we can safely dock every tie for 5.52 hours. This was part of trigonometry 4, graphing and analyzing the trigonometric function sine and cosine tangent to solve problems. Here's some questions. See if you know what you're doing.